us. This will be an experiential workshop with some exercises and a few interactive portions. So please feel free to get comfortable. Please feel free to participate. Um, as Max said, I am Emily Lies. I'm a resilience and brain training specialist and the co-founder of Mind Body Money. Um, we created this company from the belief that mental, physical, and financial health all inherently are interconnected and that you can't really address one without the other two. So our work is designed to help people build personal resilience in all three of these areas. So they are more equipped to serve the world and strive to make it more equitable and just and resilient for everyone. And the core of Mind Body Money is brain training for resilience. So in order to find resilience, we first have to find ways to address our everyday stressors. And right now, the biggest one that I'm seeing is Zoom fatigue. So this is why we are here. Um, when everything turned digital last year, we started seeing more and more people feeling exhausted and stressed in their work, even though they were all stuck at home working in their pajamas. And I'm here to tell you from a psychology perspective that Zoom fatigue is very real. A new peer reviewed article was just published that explains the psychological mechanisms behind this exhaustion. And some of the reasons might surprise you, but before I tell you, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts. Do you think you know what some of them might be? Um, I'd love for you to put some of your guesses in the chat for why you think Zoom is so fatiguing for us or why it's specifically fatiguing for you. Yeah, definitely no physical breaks. You're sitting the whole time, too much screen time, strain on your eyes. Yeah having to be on, definitely. Mm -hmm. That intense focus on one screen the whole time. Having a camera pointed at you. Yeah, definitely, it's, it's very intense, hard to focus for hours on end. Yeah, you guys are all spot on here. Um, I'm gonna show you and highlight some of the, um, the reasons that were indicated in the peer reviewed study that I thought were really fascinating. So the first reason why Zoom makes us so tired is because prolonged close up eye contact is really intense for our brains to process. And when we're in a normal meeting in person, we're usually several feet away from people. But in Zoom, our brains perceive that the people on the screens are this close to our face staring at us the whole time. And this is way too intimate for prolonged eye contact with our bosses and colleagues and complete strangers and me looking at you. So imagine if every single person in a large conference room meeting we're staring at you four inches from your face no wonder we feel uncomfortable and sweaty and nervous right this puts our brain's fear center on full alert because this intimacy and intensity can be perceived as really threatening and at the same time in meetings most people aren't looking at a single person the whole time we have the option to look away and look down at our papers and do whatever we need to do and in zoom our brains perceive this as though every person is staring at us throughout the whole meeting. And this can put us on guard and make us feel uncomfortable and self-conscious. So in the nature of this workshop's content, you always have the permission to do whatever you need to do to reduce your Zoom stress. Throughout today's session, we will go through several guided practices that allow you to shut off that um, perception of people looking at you. You can turn off your camera. You can turn away from the screen if you need to. We can give you a break from that staring contest. So the second major reason for Zoom fatigue is stress due to the fact that we can see ourselves the whole time. We aren't equipped to watch ourselves and observe our appearance and self-correct for such an extended period of time. Studies show that when we see ourselves in our reflections so often, we're more likely to be self-critical and this kind of stress can be really draining and damaging to our confidence levels. Um, the third major contributor is the lack of mobility, like I saw some people mention in the chat, or freedom to move around. So psychologists have found that we process information better when we move our bodies. So when we're stuck trying to fit into this camera frame for hours and hours at a time, it can be confining for our minds and our bodies. So throughout this workshop, if you feel like you need to move in any way, um, even if it takes you away from your computer, feel free to stand up, walk around, do squats or jumping jacks, doodle on pieces of paper, whatever you need to do physically to support your mind and body, you are not constricted to the confines of being right in front of your computer. 
And the final major reason for Zoom fatigue is the sheer cognitive load that these meetings take on in our brains. So this basically means that it requires a lot more mental effort and energy to perceive what is going on. We don't have access to all of the information that we would normally get from body language in an in-person meeting. We have to deliberately notice and think about what we look like and how engaged that we seem. We have to exaggerate our nods and our smiles and make sure that people understand us differently. And the social etiquette is even different. So let's say that my cat jumps on the bookshelf over there. And while I'm presenting, I look away from my screen just to make sure that things aren't going to become a disaster. You would perceive this as rude and less engaged because I'm not looking at you, right? So we're constantly editing ourselves and correcting our behavior in ways that we would never do in person. And that is exhausting. So we are going to take some audio only breaks. I see most of you have your cameras off, which is great. Um, we will do some guided practices to allow you to take a break from looking at the screen. Uh, psychologists suggest that you do this in any long Zoom meeting. If you are in a meeting that requires uh, full attention, ask that you can take, ask if you can take an audio only break. And this doesn't just mean turning your video off. This also means looking away from your screen entirely because that cognitive load is also perceiving what you're looking at. So, these are the findings of Zoom fatigue in a nutshell, and this new way of meeting with people is so stressful on our brains and bodies, which can contribute to overall chronic stress even when we aren't in Zoom calls. So today we're going to go through some simple strategies to train your brain to manage this kind of stress in and out of Zoom meetings. And before we jump into training our brains, I'm going to go over some super basic brain science for a moment. So your brain structure changes based on experiences. And when you have repeated or heightened experiences, your brain starts to form connections called neural pathways. These are physical structures in our brain. So if you think about it this way, your brain is like a field of grass. When you walk across a field, the act of walking always means that something is also happening to the grass, that grass is getting flattened down over time. So in other words, if you have an experience in your mind or body, say that you are stressed in a Zoom meeting, something is happening in your physical brain as well. This means that your brain is always being shaped and wired physically by your thoughts, sensations, emotions, behaviors, and experiences. And when the same things keep happening in our minds, the same things are also happening physically to our brains. So over time, as you repeatedly walk down that same route, walk down the same path in that field, paths are being cleared. And the more you walk on the same path over and over again, the more it will become solidified and the more likely you will follow it the next time. So this is exactly what's happening to you in these Zoom meetings, in any experience in your life. So in neuroscience, we say neurons that fire together, wire together. And this means that experiences are linked when they occur at the same time. So every time we hop onto a Zoom call and that stress response gets initiated because of all the reasons that we just discussed, your brain is connecting that Zoom meeting with stress. Or in other words, Zoom equals danger. So this pathway is getting cleared over and over again. And over time, your brain will begin to anticipate this stress because the connection is so strong. And eventually, no matter whether you enjoy the meeting or not, there will be a stress response happening in the background because it's just that automatic path that we start taking. So this is why we sometimes feel sweaty or shaky during Zoom calls. And it's hard to come down from the meetings after they're over because our brains just know to go there. And eventually, if we go down this path enough times, these associations might even broaden to something more general. So our brains might start to associate any work meetings with stress. And they're essentially learning that we need to be stressed in order to work. So let's go with that. We are stressed. What's the big deal? Work is stressful, right? It's kind of <laughs> inevitable that we associate work with stress in this culture. But I'd like to point out a major distinction here. Of course, work is challenging, but it doesn't have to harm our bodies and brains in the process. We don't have to go into a stress response because something is hard. And we can train our brains to change that response in the future. And this is what brain training is for. So the stress response, as you may have already learned, is known as the fight or flight response. When we are in fight or flight, our brains produce a rush of hormones like cortisol and adrenaline to prepare us to either fight off a predator or run away. 
So although the source of stress in this case is a Zoom meeting, our brains don't know the difference between the stress of a Zoom meeting and literally being chased by a tiger. And when our bodies go into this state, we aren't just buzzed with a jolt of adrenaline. Our body's physio physiology also changes in so many other ways. So our brains shut down all the non-essential systems of the body to give us more energy to fight off this tiger or run away if we need to. So these systems include the digestive system, the reproductive system, hormone regulation, peripheral vision, hearing, the immune system. And during fight or flight, blood actually drains from the prefrontal cortex, which is our conscious thinking brain. And there is no access to rational thought. So this is why people have brain fog and develop things like IBS and chronic pain and reproductive problems and chronic fatigue. It's also why you may feel spacey or disoriented or unable to focus when you're stressed. So these are all natural responses and they are necessary when there is a physical threat present. It is designed to protect us. However, this state is designed to only last a few minutes at a time. And once the threat is gone, we are supposed to go back to this healing state. But because we've gotten stuck in this perpetual state of stress, we are depleting our body's resources, sitting in on our Zoom calls, feeling sweaty and drained. We are running out of energy. We're constantly feeling this hypervigilance because people are staring at us and we are overreactive and irritable and driven by instinct, by design. So how do we balance our work and show up to these meetings and still feel safe and secure? We can't just not show up to Zoom anymore. So we have to start teaching our brains that we are okay in the moment and give our brains experiences of safety. So if we can repeatedly show our brains that we're safe throughout these Zoom meetings and beyond, this will become our new default response. We're going to be clearing that new pathway to safety instead of stress. So we're going to try this out in a basic guided practice. So in the nature of supporting you in this Zoom call, feel free to do whatever you need to do to get comfortable. As we go through a guided practice, I will be turning off my video as well for an audio only break. And just allow yourself to find a comfortable seat and gently close your eyes. Put your hand on your heart and just feel the weight of your hand on your chest. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Hold it for a moment and let that go. Take another long, deep breath in and release. Take one more long, slow, deep breath in and exhale. On your next breath, make yourself smile. Feel the warmth of your smile and just check in with yourself. In this moment, you are safe. Feel your hand and chest move up and down with your breath. Listen to your breath. Feel the ease as it comes through your nose and fills your lungs. Recognize that in this moment, in this exact moment, you don't need anything. In this moment, you are fundamentally okay. You have air to breathe. Your heart is beating. You have awareness. You are safe. You are fundamentally okay. This is exactly where you should be and what you should be doing. And you are fundamentally okay right now. Take a few breaths and appreciate all that your body does for you to keep you fundamentally okay in each moment. Feel into what it means to be okay right now. As you continue to breathe, cultivate a sense of being cared about. What does it feel like when someone has your back? Someone is supporting you unconditionally 
Someone is there for you, keeping you safe, making sure that you are fundamentally okay. Feel into what it's like to know that you are cared about. Feel this person hug you. Feel their warmth in this hug. How does it feel in the body to be hugged? Grow and intensify this feeling of being cared about, being supported, and being loved. Now bring to mind other beings that you care about. Find your compassion for them. Picture them in front of you. What does this compassion feel like? Feel it in the body. Picture these beings and imagine your compassion growing to expand beyond your body to reach the beings around you. Sit with this compassion. Now shift this sense of compassion and love back to yourself. Show compassion and care for yourself. Take in what it feels like to be on your own side. Allow this to fill you up until you embody a strong sense of calm strength. You are on your own side. You can handle anything. Feel yourself conjuring resilience as you inhale with joy. Exhale with contentment. Feel yourself getting stronger as you inhale with power. Exhale with calm strength. Feel yourself becoming invincible as you inhale with triumph. And exhale with peace. You are now embodying a strong sense of calm strength. You are fundamentally okay. You are on your own side. You don't need anything. You are invincible. Take another long, slow, deep breath in. And let that go. Allow yourself to gently bring your awareness back to the present moment. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Notice the sounds around you. Feel the temperature of the air on your skin. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Allowing yourself to come back to this moment. So you've just given your brain the experience of safety. All you need to do is check in with what it means to be fundamentally okay at any given moment. Your circumstances do not have to be perfect, but as long as you have your breath, your heart is beating and you have awareness, you are fundamentally okay. And I recommend using this practice before, during, and after Zoom calls. You can use this as a formal practice where you sit down and conjure up that feeling of being okay, just like we did. And throughout the meetings, you can simply take a few seconds to check in and say, yes, I'm breathing. Yes, my heart is beating. Yes, I am aware of things. And give your brain the experience that you are fundamentally okay. And eventually your brain is going to start associating this feeling with those Zoom meetings and with those stressors and that will be the new pathway that you're going to be paving. I also recommend building this practice into your day when you're not in calls as well and you can start to give your brain experiences of safety and solidifying the pathways to this state of being. 
every time you recognize safety and being fundamentally okay in your daily life, your brain will start to associate your environment and your life overall with this sense of wholeness. So before we move on, I would love to hear about what this experience was like for you all. If you'd like to either put that in the chat or you can unmute yourself. I want to hear about what your experience was with feeling fundamentally okay. Very relaxing, yeah. Felt like a real break. And we're able to give ourselves these breaks whenever we need them. We can always just tap into that. Even if we're taking a bathroom break, we can sit and just notice that we're fundamentally okay. Refresh to the normal day, less stressed, able to be present. All of these things bring us back to that present moment because we always have that heartbeat and that breath and that awareness right now. And we don't have that in every other moment because that's the past and the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. World is not moving so fast. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing everybody. So building upon this, we talked a little bit about how we get stuck in chronic stress states. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about why this is even possible. This is due to a phenomenon called the negativity bias. So back in early human evolution, life was dangerous. And in order to protect us, our brains were primed to prioritize negative experiences over positive ones to allow us to avoid harm instead of seek pleasure. And our way of life has since evolved. There aren't so many immediate physical threats in our day-to-day -day life, but this bias persists and it leaves our brains to perceive emotional and relational stressors as physical threats as well. And that is why your brain behaves like you're being chased by a tiger when you feel stress, when you have a difficult conversation, when you're sitting on your couch on a Zoom meeting. We're also able to perpetuate the stress response from thought alone without any external triggers. This is because the brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. So whenever we worry about something that could happen or think about possible scenarios, our brains think that the threat is present in this moment and sets off that fight or flight response repeatedly. And that's why when you worry about something in the future, you may feel your heart racing or you might have trouble breathing even though it's not happening to you right now. This is your body's attempt to get you to run away from a tiger. So the good news is that we are able to undo this bias with a little bit of brain training work so that we can become less physically affected by the stressors around us and by those thoughts that come into our minds. So the next practice we're going to do will strengthen your ability to undo your negativity bias in your daily life on and off your Zoom calls. So in a few moments, I'm going to set a timer and for the next five minutes, your task is to simply explore the room that you're in and look for beauty. So the key to undoing the negativity bias is to grow and take in the experience longer than you normally would. Stay with it and feel the experience in your physical body. Grow and enrich the experience and imagine it being absorbed into your body and mind. Remember the brain learns from experience. So the more you can fit, make this physical, the more it will impact your brain. To look for beauty in your surroundings, focus on the experience and grow the feeling of gratitude for the experience of beauty. This process could take anywhere from 15 seconds to several minutes, depending on the pace you'd like to go. So allow yourself to feel the physical experience of witnessing beauty. You can look for physical aesthetic beauty for pretty things. You can look for beautiful meaning behind objects. You can look for beauty in others. You can infuse beauty into all of these things at once. You can even be beauty in your space. And playfulness encourages brain change. So I'd like you to approach this with a sense of curious childlike wonder as though you've never seen this room before. I want you to look at your room the way a little kid takes in Disney World for the first time and soak it all up. So now is your time to get up, walk around the room, allow your mobility to be happening during this Zoom call and spend the next five minutes to just explore the, all the beauty that you can find. Time starts now and I'll let you know when it's time to come back.
All right, your five minutes are up. So please take some time now to come back to your seat and get settled once again. I'll give you a couple moments to settle back in. This is a pretty profound experience sometimes. I, um, I do it with you whenever I have people doing these exercises and I always notice something new. I just moved. So I've been noticing a lot of my old things in new places and I've been taking in those pieces of beauty. Um, I would love to hear what your experience was like with this. What surprised you? How did your relationship with your space change? Feel free to put that in the chat or unmute yourself if you'd like to share. Well, uh, I can bear. I, uh, yeah, I, I just focused on the trees outside, um, which are kind of my, my go-to. And I, yeah, I noticed like nagging, like worries and stuff coming back up. So I would always like, I'd have to like reset. And, and just try to like, and it, yeah, it got easier the, the longer I did it. Like, yeah. 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 It takes some time to settle into it, mm -hmm. especially because it's my first instinct is usually to reach for, for my phone, which is mm -hmm. just the opposite of what we want to be doing. But that's, it takes time to redirect that attention um, back to the task at hand. Mm -hmm. so we'll set a focus on gratitude. So refreshing. Loved looking at my artwork and appreciating it in a new way. Yeah, a lot of the time we have art on our walls and we buy it because we love it. And then we don't see it anymore because we're in these spaces all the time, especially when we're working from home. I rediscovered a beautiful marquetry piece. Stimulated memories of why I got it. Enjoy the sunshine seek out something different, it helped clear my head. That's great. Yeah, we're shifting our lens with something that we see all the time. And we, I, I don't know what spaces you are all in, but I'm in this room every single day and doing this practice. Each time I do it, I notice something entirely new, even though I'm looking at these things all the time. So this experience of beauty offers a profound healing state to counteract the negativity bias. So let's now take this a step further and apply it to your daily stressors. So in neuroscience, there is something called the 90 second rule and studies show that it takes only 90 seconds for the body to metabolize the stress-related chemicals. It takes 90 seconds for the stress response to go away. And this means that if you are feeling stress for longer than 90 seconds, which we usually do, it means that it has to be re-triggered by thoughts. Now there is a simple practice that I use with my clients to stop this 90 second stress response from being re-triggered, which is called redirection, which Mac actually commented on saying that, you know, those thoughts crept in and then we refocused our attention to something else. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. So whenever you notice yourself feeling stressed or overwhelmed or even tired on these Zoom, Zoom calls, you can use this practice and it will bring you out of that stress state and prevent the stress response from being re-triggered for another 90 seconds and another and another. So this practice is called Factual Physical Beautiful. And all you need to do is name a good fact about the moment, then name something positive that you are experiencing physically in the moment, and no then notice something beautiful in your surroundings like you just did for the past five minutes. So it's factual, physical, beautiful, factual, physical, beautiful. And this is a gratitude practice that forces your brain and body out of a stress response almost immediately because it refocuses your thoughts and releases a rush of healing chemicals from the brain to reset your brain and body. So factual, physical, beautiful. Do this over and over again when you're feeling that stress response or feeling a little bit nervous, and this will pull you out of stress very quickly. So for example, it could look like this. Factual, my cat is over there. Physical, my shirt is soft. Beautiful, I love the light hitting my window. Factual, um, I had a smoothie for breakfast. Physical, 
it's a perfect temperature in here. Beautiful. I love the color of the cup next to me. So it's pretty simple. Factual, it doesn't have to be something that we're overthinking. It's just pulling you out of that thought immediately. So any good fact in the moment. And then physical is related to your physical bodily experience. And beautiful is this appreciation of beauty like we just went through. So let's try this in the chat. I'd love for everybody to write down something factual, something physical, and something beautiful in the moment right now that you are grateful for. These are all positive statements. These can be really, really simple comments. I also really love to do this exercise when I don't know what to think about, not necessarily when I'm stressed, but when I'm out on a walk or something in Central Park, I will use it as an opportunity to come back to the present moment and, and feel that groundedness like we did with the beauty exercise. So I could say factual, the trees are green, physical, I feel the breeze on my face, beautiful, uh, the way the light is hitting the leaves. Um, and it really helps me stay present in the moment in what I'm doing. I am drinking coffee, it's hot, I love coffee time. I'm warm, the trees are blooming, my dog is sleeping beside me. I feel good after my morning run, I'm lucky to have beautiful light. Yeah. I love my soft sweater, the weather is perfect. We can use this practice and do it over and over and over again. And the more we do that, once again, we are solidifying that pathway in our brain. And this is a gratitude practice. So whenever we have stress bubbling up and we're feeling that stress response, we are in that field, we can create a new pathway towards a state of gratitude. And the more we do this, the more our brains are learning that we that is the new response that we are going to take instead of the stress response. So when you notice physical signs of stress in your Zoom calls, if you're feeling sweaty or shaky or nervous, or you're having trouble breathing, or you're even just feeling exhausted and it's hard to focus, come back to this practice and just name something factual, something physical, something beautiful in your head over and over and over again. No one has to know that you're doing it. And this tool is always available to you. Remember that 90 second rule. And whenever you feel yourself getting stressed, listing factual, physical, beautiful will help you prevent that 90 seconds from being re-triggered to another 90 seconds and another after that. And this will pull you out of that chronic stress. So, so far we have undone stress responses using factual, physical, beautiful. We have established a neutral state with the fundamentally okay practice. And we shifted the negativity bias in your beauty exercise, your beauty exploration of your space. So we're going to conclude with a practice to find joy and counteract physical stress responses even more powerfully. So the more we are able to experience joy in our daily lives, the more equipped we will be to handle the harder moments from a place of resilience, noticing and really taking in beneficial and joyful experiences that we're already having heals the body and resets us from the constant stress state that we find ourselves in. And this is not to negate the challenges that we have in our lives. This is not to say that we are ignoring the negative things that happen. We are just counteracting that and pairing it with the, the positivity that is already happening. Our negativity bias is forcing us to only see the negative things that are going on, but there's so much positivity as well. So to conclude our practices, we are going to do one more guided practice and you can settle into your seat. I will shut off my video as well so you don't see me looking at you. And once again, just close your eyes, put your hand on your heart and feel the weight of your hand on your chest. And recognize that in this moment, once again, you are safe. Feel your hand and chest move up and down with your breath. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. And let that go. Make yourself smile and take another deep breath in. Smile bigger as you exhale. 
Keep smiling on your inhale. Show a nice obnoxious toothy smile on your exhale. As you inhale again, feel a laugh starting to bubble up. Feel this almost laughter as you exhale. Your brain doesn't know the difference between a real or fake smile and laugh. So allow it to be as obnoxious and big as possible. If you want, let out a real laugh. Keep this sense of laughter present inside you as you continue to breathe and smile. Now think of a moment or an experience that you had today that brought you a sense of joy even if it was the littlest thing. Bring up a moment that brought you joy. Maybe you accomplished something, you ate something delicious, you felt joy while witnessing the beauty in your space, someone smiled at you. Think about a small joyful moment that made you smile. Make yourself smile now Now put yourself back in this moment and take some time to notice. What do you see? What do you hear? Observe your surroundings. Stay with the experience. With this memory, conjure up a sense of joy in the body. Make yourself smile. Feel a smile in your whole body. Feel it physically. Feel your hand on your heart. How does this joy feel in the body? Where is it located? What qualities does it have? Maybe your body would like to move in some way that further embodies this sensation. Maybe you smile more or sit up taller. Notice what your body would like to do with this joy. Soak in this energy of joy. Imagine it as a ball of warm light within your body. Give it a color. Imagine this light radiating out on each inhale and each exhale. Visualize this warmth expanding, broadening, filling more and more of your body as you continue to breathe. Once it's filled your entire body, imagine this light being absorbed into your cells like a sponge. Make yourself smile once again and feel your body soaking up this positive experience. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Hold it for a moment and let that go. Take another long, deep breath in and release. Take one more long, slow, deep breath in and gently exhale. Sit with this joy that's now filling your entire body. Take a few moments to breathe with this sense of joy and calm strength. If you find yourself drifting to thoughts, simply notice them and gently come back and notice your breath once again. Just continuing to breathe in this joy.
Slowly bring yourself back to your breath. If you've noticed your mind wandering to thoughts, Make yourself smile a little as you remind yourself of this joyful experience. Now gently bring your attention back to your surroundings. Feel the temperature of the air on your skin, the feeling of support beneath you. Start to notice the sounds around you. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes and notice how relaxed you are now. Stay with that feeling for a moment and feel into the stillness. On your next inhale, make yourself smile. Continue smiling on your exhale. Smile bigger on your inhale. Let out a toothy, obnoxious smile as you exhale. Keep smiling as you take one more deep breath in. And let that go. When you're ready, with a smile, gently open your eyes. Stretch if you need to, readjust, get comfortable again. And remember the brain changes from experience. So you just took a really small positive moment that happened today. You grew it and allowed your brain and body to have a powerful experience around it. The more you do this, the more your brain will change for the good, the less you'll be in fight or flight and the more you will shift out of that negativity bias. You literally just changed your brains and your brain and body's physiology at will. You have the ability to do this at any moment. I did not do that for you. I prompted a couple of things, but you are the one that changed the way your brain and body was functioning in that moment. You can take these tools to grow and take in the good throughout your day-to-day -day life, as well as in a daily practice. And as a thank you for being here with us, we are offering you a guided practice that encompasses some of the things that you did in today's workshop. And if you do this short guided practice each day, your brain has no choice but to change. So I'm going to put this link in the chat if you'd like to access this free practice. Um, this just encompasses everything we've learned into one eight minute guided practice. So to recap the things that we went through today, you first noticed what it felt like to be fundamentally okay. You felt into your breath and your heartbeat. You conjured a sense of being on your own side. And then you explored the beauty in the space that you're in. You soaked up all of the beauty that is around you all of the time. And then you applied this to a redirection technique called something factual, physical, beautiful as a way to interrupt those 90 seconds of stress. And then we concluded by conjuring up a sense of joy and growing it and allowing your brain to absorb it and be changed by it. So with all of these in mind, whenever you have Zoom meetings, whenever you feel like you are getting drained by this marathon of screen time, I recommend using the following practice. So before your Zoom meetings, spend about five minutes just with your eyes closed and tapping into the experience of what it's like to be fundamentally okay in this moment. This will teach your brain to notice those reminders like your breath and your heartbeat and associate it with safety. So as you go through your calls, if you take a deep breath, then your brain will remember, yes, we're okay. We are okay. We don't need to be in stress state. And then in the meetings themselves, every once in a while, deliberately notice something factual, something physical, and something beautiful that you are grateful for in that moment. And it can just take a couple of seconds. It doesn't have to pull you completely away. I know we have to still pay attention to what's going on, but if you just notice, yep, factual, I have some tea, physical, this sweater is cozy, beautiful. There's amazing people in front of me. 
and then just come back. This will teach your brain to go back to that state of gratitude and get you out of a stress state very quickly. And finally, to provide your brain with a powerful antidote to Zoom stress and Zoom fatigue. Of course, we can't always help when we get stressed on these calls. You can use the guided audio practice that I'm giving you today at the conclusion of your meetings. It's only eight minutes and this will lift you back up and reset your brain after those draining meetings and interrupt the stress that's happening so it doesn't perpetuate throughout the rest of your day. So the brain learns from experience. And in this workshop, you have given your brain experiences of safety, gratitude, beauty, and joy. And the more you access this, the more your brain will literally physically change its shape. You have the ability to change your body's physiology at will using all of these basic tools. These are all inherently human things that we know how to do and we can utilize them to our benefit. So what you just experienced is a snippet of the kinds of practices that we offer in our brain training programs. We offer a six week interactive brain training program called the Resilient Self, which is designed for high empathy individuals. This program takes you through a series of neuroscience based practices to break down subconscious limitations, change your brain and body's response to stress, heal and prevent burnout, kind of like what we talked about today, prevent taking on the stressors and traumas of your work and life. And this also primes your brain to notice the opportunities that would lead you to your goals. We also have a very exciting program coming out in about a month or so to break down the anxieties and fears around returning to work and public spaces after the COVID shutdown. So we've all learned this fear response around the idea of being near other people. Remember, these neurons that fire together wire together. So our brains are associating humans with danger. So we're getting this chronic stress started. So this four week program will help you to break out of that fear, retrain your brain to feel safe around other people again, and help you jump back into pursuing your goals as the world reopens without this learned stress. So because I love the Kettle Space community so much, I'm going to offer a sneak peek of this new program, as well as a discount to you all when it launches. So be sure to register with your email with if you go to that link to get the guided practice, and I'll keep you updated and give you a great discount on these, on these programs. So before we move into our final concluding practice, before we close today, I would love to um, address any questions that you may have and chat about concerns that you um, you have during Zoom meetings and things like that. I know Crystal had a great question earlier about um, accessing safety in meetings without seeming like we're checking out and not paying attention to our coworkers. This doesn't have to be a long, um, a long practice. You don't have to sit and breathe for the full eight minutes like what we did. You can always just say, yep, I'm breathing. Yep, my heart is beating. Yep, I have awareness and go right back to paying attention. Um, even just these little moments are teaching our brains to redirect to that state of safety. So what other questions do you all have about brain training, about um, Zoom fatigue or anything else? Is there a difference between exhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth? Um, there is, it does different things to your body, but honestly, whatever makes you feel the most centered, um, I recommend doing that. If you exhale through your mouth, it can kind of control it a little bit more. So I recommend if you want to slow your breathing down, you can exhale throughout your mouth, through your mouth, um, through pursed lips, kind of like blowing on a candle. Um, that helps you to control it a little bit more, but the nose breathing is a little bit more natural. So if we're sitting with our breath for a long time, um, it's more comfortable through the nose. Yeah, what other questions do we have? Or any comments, anything that you notice throughout these practices? I'd love to hear about that as well. Yeah, I just I just love the idea of like a break during meeting. I just I, I don't really see that happening in, in in my meetings. It's something I bring to the team. Like, hey, how about we yeah. take a break halfway through? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's wild how the expectations change for how long we're expected to just sit and take that on. Um, but we can always give ourselves our own breaks, even though they're short, you know, even if we're doodling on, on, our, on our paper in front of us, just writing down factual, physical, beautiful really helps to give that brain, give that 
give your brain a mental break, even if it's super, super brief, but yeah. Yeah, these are really, really basic, simple tools that we can use whenever we need to. Um, neurons that fire together, wired together. That's a great new motto to have. <laughs> Yeah, so before we conclude, I'd like to do just one final small reset practice. So one final time, just allow yourself to get comfortable. I'll turn off my camera as well. And close your eyes. Put your hand on your heart. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. And release. Make yourself smile and take another deep breath in. Smile bigger as you let that go. Keep smiling as you inhale. And feel a laugh bubbling up as you exhale. Now in this moment, notice something factual that you are grateful for right now. Just name a good fact. And what is something physical that you are grateful for? Some physical experience. And finally, name something beautiful about this moment. Make yourself smile as you take another deep breath in. Smile bigger as you let that go. Take yourself back to that moment of joy that you conjured up. What did that joy feel like? Notice the physical experience again now. Make yourself smile even bigger. Give a toothy smile as you take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, feel another laugh starting to bubble up. Your brain doesn't know the difference between real and fake laughter. So let yourself laugh out loud right now. Give your brain the experience of laughter and joy. Keep it going. Notice how you feel right now. You have the ability to conjure up this experience anytime you need it. You have the ability to change your own brain, to change your body's physiology at will by noticing beauty, making yourself smile and conjuring joy, and noticing that you are fundamentally okay in this moment. Make yourself smile one more time and take a deep breath in and release. Bring your attention back to the space around you. Feel the temperature of the air on your skin. Feel the support beneath you. Notice the sounds around you. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. When you're ready, with a smile, you can gently open your eyes. I have put the link to the guided practice if you'd like it. Once again, in the chat, it is at becomeresilientnow.com slash kettle space. This is just for you guys. It has been an absolute pleasure talking about brain training with you all today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Mac, for hosting this as well. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful, resilient day.